Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening, I'm Alexa Farrell. Thank you for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10 on this historic night. America stands at a crossroads right now. President Biden announced today he will not be seeking re-election, something that hasn't been done in more than 50 years. But it is uncertain whether the torch will be passed to his historic choice for vice president. Looking live right now at the White House, the residence is empty tonight. President Biden remains at his beach residence in Delaware, recovering from COVID. He's expected to return to Washington sometime this week. The vice president is at her residence in D.C. and issued a statement reacting to the news. So did GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump, who has every intention of reclaiming the White House this November. But the truth is, it's anyone's guess who will be moving in come January 2025. Here's the very latest tonight. The world learned of president's decision just before two o'clock with a letter in which he said, while it has been my intention to seek reelection, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and for the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. The president went on to say that he would speak to the nation later this week about his decision to drop out. And although he mentioned Vice President Kamala Harris and thanked her in his letter, he did not endorse her. That came in a post on X about 15 minutes later. Among the many questions our team is looking into tonight, will Harris be nominated to run against GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump? Well, it's not an automatic thing. That process is being debated as we speak, but there is one sign of what's to come. The Biden-Harris campaign tonight rebranded by changing its name to the Harris campaign. Vice President Harris declared her candidacy for president in a statement saying in part, I am honored to have the president's endorsement and my intention is to earn and win this nomination. We have 107 days until election day. Together we will fight and together we will win. As for the GOP presidential nominee, former President Donald Trump told CNN he thinks Harris will be easier to beat this November. Mr. Trump had also this to say in his post to his social media platform, quote, crooked Joe Biden was not fit to run for president and is certainly not fit to serve and never was. He only attained the position of president by lies, fake news and not leaving his basement, end quote. Our team coverage of this breaking news begins with Rebecca Castor in Washington. President Biden is officially out of the 2024 race for the White House. It follows weeks of growing pressure from Democrats after his shaky debate performance highlighted concerns over his age and mental fitness. In the end, he decided on what Democrats are hoping will be a graceful exit. And with just about a month before the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, he's not taking any chances on a messy party fight, endorsing his vice president, Kamala Harris, to take his place as the Democratic nominee, saying she's the candidate with the best chance to beat Donald Trump in the fall. It also allows her access to Biden's $250 million war chest without going through any lengthy legal proceedings that could have held up her campaign. Democrat leaders could move as early as next week to officially make Harris the nominee through a virtual roll call before their convention, though it's not clear if there are other contenders who might object. Biden is the first incumbent president in more than 50 years not to run for re-election, bringing an end to a half century of public service and opening the door to a new generation of leadership. In Washington, D.C., Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Now, Fox 61's Jay Garcia spent the day seeking reaction to the president's decision, speaking with senators, members of Congress, and both state leaders on both sides of the aisle. He continues our team coverage of this bombshell here in studio. Jake. Alexa, from outside the White House, where people held up signs saying thank you, Joe, to all across Connecticut, the reaction to the president's historic decision has been swift and mostly supportive. Let's be very clear. This decision was selfless and strong. He put the country first. Senator Richard Blumenthal met with reporters in New Haven Sunday afternoon to weigh in on the race for the White House. Joe Biden's decision is seismic. 
as a selfless, strong reaffirmation of his own courageous leadership, but also his passing the torch to a new generation. The senator stopping short of an endorsement, but says Vice President Harris is fully capable of doing the job and is at the top of his list. Representative Jim Himes, who was the first Democratic leader in Connecticut to call for President Biden to withdraw from the race, released a statement in part saying, quote, President Biden has a remarkable legacy, going on to say that Biden is, quote, putting our nation before his personal interests and has now secured that legacy to the ages. Governor Lamont also offering a similar sentiment, saying Biden's top priorities like the economy, fixing neglected infrastructure and access to health care has made, quote, an enormous difference here in Connecticut. Connecticut House Republican leader Vincent Candelora says it's a decision that was no surprise. It was not a complete surprise seeing it. Um... It is, you know, highly unprecedented, I think, what we're seeing in this campaign. And for me, it just raises a lot of questions. Candelora says this is something that the American people should hear directly from the president, not by scrolling on social media. And we haven't seen this man in a number of days. And uh, I think it would have been better for him to do this in front of a camera. Um, and maybe in front of some media so these questions could be answered. Candelora says many Republicans now question if Biden should stay in office for the rest of his term. This was not a time, I think, for him to go into hiding after we saw the assassination attempt on President Trump. And, and then for him to just abruptly issue this statement, y y y y you are now concerned at his ability to, to continue to serve through January. But Blumenthal disagrees. It is completely graceless and unfortunate that at this moment some Republican leaders are stooping and going in a race to the bottom, apparently. This process will be open and orderly and responsive to the delegates and to all Americans who elected them. Now, Connecticut leaders not the only ones reacting to today's news. In the next half hour, we'll hear from reactions from residents from all over the state. Reporting in studio, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you. I'm joined now by Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst, who's been speaking with Connecticut delegates for the next month's Democratic National Convention. Emma, the top question on everyone's mind, most people at least, <laughs> what happens next? Well, that is a really big question, Alexa, and one that unfortunately right now doesn't really have a clear answer. But there are a couple things we do know, so I want to walk us through the possible path that could be taken and what we do actually know so far at this hour. Even though President Biden endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, to take his place at the top of the Democratic ticket, that does not automatically make her the next nominee. The Democratic National Convention has not yet happened. It's slated to start August 19th, just under a month from now. The convention is where delegates from all 50 states and Washington, D.C. will cast their votes to a officially nominate someone as the Democratic candidate for the White House. We saw this play out on the Republican side last week at the RNC in Milwaukee. Now, there will be about 4,000 delegates at the 2024 DNC in Chicago. Around 3,900 of those delegates previously pledged to President Biden are now free agents. Kamala Harris or any challenging candidate needs to earn nearly 2,000 delegates to secure the official nomination in August. To throw another monkey wrench into all of this, though, the DNC is scheduled to, to hold a virtual roll call this year in early August to get the nomination done before the convention actually even starts. As of right now, we're hearing the DNC is still planning that virtual roll call, but Nothing is set in stone right now as the rules and platform committees for the DNC are still meeting to discuss all of this. We are seeing a flood of support, though, from top Democrats and delegate delegates all across the country for Kamala Harris. I spoke with two of Connecticut's delegates today who tell me they are fully endorsing Harris as the next nominee. Kamala Harris has been the vice president. Hopefully uh, she can be the next president. Uh, she will hopefully be the next nominee. I fully endorse her as a Connecticut delegate uh, to be the next, to be the Democratic nominee. Kamala Harris will fundamentally 
put the American people first and um, make sure that she supports us not only domestically, but internationally. Kamala Harris has already been vetted. She is a well-known entity. She's run a national campaign, uh, two to be exact. Uh, and quite frankly, I think she's exactly what we need in terms of reaching out to uh, women and, and to continue to reach out to voters uh, of color and then additionally to younger voters. And that point, Representative Harris is making there a big reason many are standing behind Harris tonight. But another important point here, as President Biden's running mate, Harris was part of the previous ticket and therefore has access to funding and financial resources. The Biden-Harris campaign already transitioning to the Harris campaign tonight. There are obviously still so many questions heading into August in just a few weeks, a major one being Harris's potential vice presidential pick. For her, there's also uncertainty around the process. Democrats don't want this to look like a coronation of Harris just because Biden endorsed her. But delegates I spoke with are saying Joe Biden is still the leader of the Democratic Party right now. This is still his party, and he has a lot of sway. The convention, though, really trying to balance optics while also trying to get everyone on the same page. They want to make the party a united front. Many Connecticut Democrats I spoke with today saying likely behind Kamala Harris. Alexa. So a lot of questions to be answered <laughs> still, a lot of uncertainty moving forward. Yeah. But for right now, who do you think the front runners are to become Kamala Harris's vice president if she does get that top spot for the ticket? you know, come November. So first thing, she obviously would be a historic nominee. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are talking about that as a person of color, as a black woman, and as an Indian woman. A lot of people are saying how historic of a nominee she would be. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the trend is toward what she might not be able to bring to the table. Obviously, she's bringing to the table young voters, voters of color. They say she's a real champion for women. Mm -hmm. So we're hearing a lot of Democratic governors from swing states that the Dems would need in order to win the election this year in November. So, for example, Roy Cooper, the governor of North Carolina, Andy Bashir, governor of Kentucky, Josh Shapiro, governor of Pennsylvania, as well as Senator Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona, obviously North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Arizona, all key swing states that the yeah. Democrats would really need in their pocket come November. Now, what is the message to top voters? You talked about it, about the fact that they don't want this to seem like Harris is automatically in, because they did have a say in Biden becoming, right. you know, their Democratic choice come November. So what is the message to Democrats, you know, from the leaders? Right. 14 million people in the primaries this year voting for Joe Biden to be their nominee mm -hmm. for the president. Obviously, a lot of people right now saying, well, hey, Biden is not who I voted for, and now he's dropped out of the race. Um, so even though Kamala Harris is his vice president and was the vice presidential nominee, a lot of people are saying, well, she's not the presidential nominee. Obviously not yet, but a lot of top Democrats want voters to know she was still part of this ticket. She's been a part of the Biden administration for the past three and a half, nearly four years. So a lot of Democrats are trying to reassure voters that she's still a known quantity, she's still a part of this administration, and she's still the right person that they say can defeat former President Trump come November. Emma, thank you for all of that insight. Working hard, a lot of historic firsts, right? <laughs> <A lot. laughs> We've seen them a lot this year.